All right, I got it. You ready? Yo, crewies, welcome back to another Crooked Tripod. I am Josh. I'm Erica. And Erica has never had a root beer float. We just found that out in the behind the scenes that all the patrons get to listen to every week. If you weren't so cheap, you could become a patron listener and you could go listen to us and see the astonished look on my face when I found out that you, Erica, have never had a root beer float. I mean, legit shock, by the way. I was stunned. Everyone. I had no words and that never happens. As you know, I always have something to say. (gasps) Oh my God, I'm a record breaker. I left you you speechless. Well, for two reasons, you left me speechless (laughs) and you may be the only person that's never had a root beer float. You had to meet somebody one day. (laughs) It's me. I'm here. I'm the problem. It's me. (laughs) Hi, I'm the problem. Okay, Taylor. So we have the daddy daughter dance tomorrow night. um, And it is Taylor Swift theme. So the girls have Taylor shirts made. Uh, Ooh, for nice. the dance. Lucy's going to be wearing some sort of top hat and she has like a red sweater. I guess that's like a Taylor look. Um, okay. And I don't know what I don't. Charlotte's like, I'm not dressing up. She's still my kid. She's like, I'm not dressing up. Not doing it. I love that. That's so cute. If I'm holding is, this, Erica, it is the what, it's the tip of my oh, tea bag. Where tea? do you think the string is? Ooh, when that happens, <sighs> not a good time. I'm sorry for you. I'm going to have to dig it out. Yeah. Is it really hot? Yeah. It's it Careful burnt, now. It burnt my fingertips. Anyway, my non-root <laughs> beer drinking friend. We have decided, you know what? <laughs> Maybe this will be a patrons only thing. Maybe we'll do patrons only root beer float pre-show for the next episode that we do together. <gasps> because we decided I should try it, make it at home and try it on camera. Yes. Let's do it. Okay, I mean, I'm in. So am I. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully, I make it right so I'm not disappointed. I'll help you. We'll work through it together. Excellent. Literally, all you need is vanilla ice cream and root beer. Can't be that complicated, though. No, it can't. I feel like, though, for your first one, you should use actual root beer. I am going to use diet root beer because I just cannot drink a regular soda. I I feel like it's poison. Okay. Even though I drank about 75 of these the other night, I'll tell you what. So I got two stories. First one, uh, I am drinking a Miller Lite, just so people that are not on YouTube um, yeah. can see. Anyway, I uh, we went to Disney, and Abby wanted some sort of ice cream concoction that you can only get in uh, Aladdin, wherever Aladdin is at. So okay. um, we we had to go. What's the what's the name of where Aladdin's? It's like Oh, the is it? Was it a Dole Whip? Is that what she was looking for? Oh, yeah. All yep. day. All day. We have we have got to get a Dole Whip. We've got to yeah. get a Dole Whip. We have to Classic. get a like, Dole Whip. Or like, whatever. We can get seven of them. I don't <laughs> care. I just don't want to hear you say Dole Whip anymore. So we are doing yeah. everything. Because our whole day, when we take the girls to Magic Kingdom, is planned out. From the time we get there to the time yeah. we leave, it is all mapped out. Because you can go on and schedule all your times and all the things. And of course, they're more interested in seeing princesses and meeting and, and dancing with Merida from Brave and all that than riding rides. Yeah. So our whole day is scheduled. So Smart. The, it is. She did a great job. I didn't have anything to do with it. I just drove. You just drove? Drove, paid, and was there. Um, so it's the end of the, it's it's it. We've done everything. It's in, she's like, oh my God, we didn't get a Dole Whip. I'm like, Jesus H Christ. We are finding... <laughs> These freaking, and of course, the only place you can get them is in, uh, uh, what is the name of the, that city? Uh, Arag- Agrabah. Agrabah. So you ha- you can only get it there, right? <laughs> so we go over there. We wait yep. in line because everybody else apparently also forgot to get their Dole Whips for the day. So yes. we wait. It was me, Abby, Charlie, Lucy, and my niece, Skylar was with us because it was part of the work trip. So she was helping babysit while Abby and I had to do work functions. But this was afterward mm. and we were at, at Disney. Um, we're in line. And they had the option. You could get the Dole Whip, which apparently is vanilla ice cream and pineapple juice. Yes. Or you could get a root or, beer float. Or, right. or, oh. or, yeah, yeah. Or you could get a root beer float. And right. I love root beer floats. And I, we were in line. And I had to make a last second decision. And I said, you know what? We are in Agrabah. I will do as the Agrabagians do. 
<laughs> and, and, I, and I'm getting a Dole Whip. So we get our Dole Whips. We go over to the side because there's nowhere to sit, of course. So the kids are in the strollers and we, we're all just sitting there on the floor, the ground, the dirty ground. Because at that point, we're hot, we're sweaty, we don't care. It probably rained and we got wet. It's, we don't care. Sweat. We're nasty. It doesn't matter. So we're sitting yeah. there with our Dole Whips and Skylar and my niece and I, Skylar is my niece, by the way, not Skylar and my niece and I, but Skylar and I take a drink of this. And we both look at each other and we're like, this is the nastiest thing oh, no. I've ever had in my life. And Abby's just over there like, oh my God, this is so good. Dude, I, did, I hated it. Skylar hated it. And one of the girls wouldn't drink theirs because they thought it was so gross. So I'm like, all of this. And I could have just had a root beer float. You know what's worse? I have had, I have stood in that same line. I've had the Dole Whip. I have never seen the root beer float <clears throat> on it. <laughs> so there you go. I actually did have an opportunity, but I didn't take it. Do you like the Dole Whip? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm with Abby there. I got to tell you. I did it like it. Terrible. I mean, terrible. But you know, this was all meant to be because now we have a behind the scenes to make it happen. That's true. That's you will true. be there for my first root beer float. I'm excited. I just hope that That's you enjoy magical. it. I'll feel bad. We just got to make sure don't buy cheap root beer, please. Please get a nice, a nice solid root beer and a nice creamy ice cream. Don't get like a store brand ice cream. Okay. We want this to really, we want your first time to be really memorable. Unlike most people's first times, once they want to, usually they want to forget, right? Forget. Like, oh my God. True. Like, is this what everybody's all excited about? Why is this so, this is overrated. Mm. Yeah, I can only imagine that's what other people <laughs> think. So, so, I actually have three stories. That was one. Look at my hair today, huh? Looks good. Slick back look. So, HMC Podcast, we finally recorded together after, since I have not seen them since the cabin. Mm. Okay, so since like the first week of November. What? Yes, I have not seen them. I know it's that's what we were laughing about. Is like if you weren't in the know, you wouldn't know because we release episodes every week. We just yeah. had so many from the cabin, and then we mix in you know your and my episodes that are in there as well. So it really got stretched out. Um, but no, nice. I hadn't seen them because, and I also couldn't go to Seth's birthday party, so I didn't see them at Seth's um, haunted house birthday party that he does every year, his mystery uh, thing. So I wasn't oh, at that. Right. So I didn't see him at that either. Uh, and then Jess had some other stuff going on that she wasn't able to do stuff. So we, yeah, we hadn't seen each other. So we finally recorded and I totally forgot that Seth and I's birthday are in December. So Jess had our birthday presents that she brought. So this is what she got me. It's a custom Art the Clown wow. beer mug. That's very, very nice. Right? And now with the amber beer. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, Miller Lite's not amber, but I guess I could get an amber beer. Well, yeah, whatever color, any color, it's going to look. You got to take a picture. You know, you got to put that on the gram mm. somewhere. I know. I'm so bad about it. You know, I hate social media. I hate it with a passion. I, I really dislike it. I try to stay away from it. Um, that was story number two, the third one. And then we can hop into I, We didn't even tell people what we're rating today. But you know, no. people probably don't tune in for that anyway. They probably just tune in for the madness that ensues. Uh yeah, I drank about 75 of these uh, Tuesday night, and I'll tell you what, I really felt old Wednesday. I am not built for this anymore. I'm sorry. Welcome to, what are we now? Mid to late 30s? Uh, I would say mid. We're still mid, right? We're still mid. Once we're 37, that's where that's where it That's it. That's, what I, that's where I take the Yeah, I think what, like 31, 32 is early 30s. Yeah. 33, 34. 35 is mid 30s uh, maybe we are maybe we are late 30s oh my god that's terrible i don't think so i think 37 38 39 is is late i'll go 30s. with that that's late 30s we're still okay we're still old though Man, we're there is... our music is classic rock now from high school if you do realize that right well I, that's no... so sad the funny thing is, so I don't think I've talked to you since the Super Bowl, or maybe we did record. No, the Super Bowl is Sunday, so I have it. Yes. But my friend was, were texting me during the halftime show, mm. and um, and well, really during the whole thing. But he was like, 
why is it that our music is like what's being catered to now? And I was like, it's because our generation is now are now the people that have jobs and probably yep. make decent money and we can afford to buy things Like the younger generation. They're still like working their way up and like, you know, not money isn't as easily accessible to them as it would be for somebody that is in our age bracket. Right. So they're now catering to us because we are their, um, target consumer because we have money. Yes. And as we always like to say on this show, nostalgia is huge. It is. I got it. I, sorry, it I had huge. to get this thing. Out. I Look, love it. It's the lever is out. The Not lever. the lever. Ah! The level. What the f- <laughs> There we go. Sorry. It was really bothering me. It was at an angle. Anyway, we are, yeah, we are the target market. We are for money. I agree because as, as I've probably mentioned before, I love my thirties because I can afford what I want. Mm. You know, it's bigger sense of independence and you're not struggling like you were in your late teens, early twenties. Like this is a good age. It's a nice age. And we have so much, at our fingertips nowadays, but yes. nostalgia is just so big. I don't remember. I mean, granted, when you're a kid, you don't. It'd be interesting to ask our parents when they were in their 30s, did they have anything nostalgic come back from when they were kids, when they were in their 30s, which would have been what? Maybe early 90s, mid 90s? Well, so my dad Depends. is my dad's 60. Yeah. So 30 years ago, he would have been 30, which would have been what? So the nine, in the 90s? Right. So I'm wondering if in the 90s, because my parents are in their early 60s as well. So we're mm-hmm. in the same age. They're in the same age group. I wonder if then they were nost- there was nostalgia coming in from their childhood, which would be the 60s, 70s. Like I- it's happening to us. I want to say no, because that Agreed. is when the 90s are such like their own period mm-hmm. that I feel like. I feel like the 90s and you had all this like that was really the start of like the technological boom, right? Like it's nothing in For comparison sure. to what we have now, but they had the Internet in a very raw form. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. It was becoming, everything was becoming more digital. I think the early 2000s is really when that really took off. But like, I just, I feel like the 90s were such like their own thing. But pivotal. <laughs> when were like bell bottoms and stuff? When was that stuff like popular? In the ni- late 90s, early 2000s, because I remember wearing them middle school ish. Well, then so that I think, be- were they popular in the 60s or the 70s? This Both. So maybe it was coming back just in a different form and I'm misremembering, but so maybe it was, I just, I think for my, and again, cause I was younger. That's where I was like a teenager, I think in the nineties. Yeah. Um, maybe I wasn't even yet. No, but. we were, I know in 99 I was finishing fifth grade. So like 12, 11, 12, so we weren't even teenagers yet, but like we, I remember the nineties. Right. So I yeah. just, I think I'm remembering it as its own time period when like if I were older during that time period, maybe like Seth would mm-hmm. be somebody good to ask about that. Let's call him. Hey, well, like not friend. Th- oh dude, he's in. Di- what time is it? It's only nine. Uh, he might be awake. I bet you his ass is in bed. You want to see? Bed. Here, let's see. He won't be able to hear you though. I'll be able to hear him though. He's not going to answer. We can try him. Oh, but you really are. Phone there's, friend. there's a wet. He still wouldn't be able to hear. I don't think, uh, <laughs> Imagine he's like, why are you calling me about this? I don't remember which phone number. Here, let's try this one. <laughs> let's see if he answers. If he answers, he's going to be very rude. Is he really? I may not have any service. He's probably going to just ignore it <laughs> either way. No, he'll answer. He's not answering, though. Oh, no. It's not ringing. Ah. Well, huh? I don't know. Um, yeah, okay. but funny enough, bell bottoms and flare is back now, which is interesting because it was popular when I was in school and it was popular when our parents were in school. So I think it's at a certain time, it's like a bracket. Maybe the bracket is 30 years of time. I mean, it would make sense based on that. And based on what you're saying, right, we're at this age where we can afford to spend 
and not to mention at this time in the space of time i feel like we're all in spend money we spend money i know i do it's part of life i love it i'm on amazon all day every day add to my cart remove add order order again i mean it's just buy 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 in hmm. sync maybe it is a 30 year cycle maybe i think 30s is a top notch time although they say the 40s are good too so we'll see i guess we'll find out not just yet not i wonder just, if i can call him yet. on instagram <laughs> you can that'll use your wi-fi it will? Mm-hmm. Uh, it won't let me. No? No. Google oh, it's Chrome. on your computer? Google Chrome is not allowing it. Ooh. That's fine. It wasn't meant to be. Um, Darn it. Anyway. We'll have to survey him. This episode, you know, 50 minutes in, we are ranking <laughs> our favorite PG-13 movies. And I'm not going to lie. At the beginning of this, I may or may not have been um, stalling a little bit. Because I'm trying to, just like the last ranking episode we did, I just don't know where I'm putting a couple of these movies. Mm. I did not have a hard time with this. I did have to look them up. I did have to look up a list just to be sure which movies were PG-13. Uh, one of them surprised me that it was, and it made me very happy that it was. And uh, once I saw them all, I knew what order. There was only one switch that I made. Hmm. It was a very fun list. I really like this idea. I'm glad you came up with it. I came up with it? I thought you came up with it. You can have all the credit. It was all you in the last okay. episode. I'll I don't take know it. how you came up with it, but you're like, oh yeah, PG-13 horror movies. We were talking about a movie that came out and we thought it would have been bet Night Swim. If Night it Swim. That was it. Yes. That was it. Thank you, Night Swim. Out of your demise came this great idea. That's true. I'm not going to lie, though, dude. I think I have my list solidified here, and there's a few that didn't make it that I'm a little sad about. Do you have honorable mentions? I do, but I was kind of just throwing some a bone because I I have a reason that I have them on it, but they're... <sighs> this could have been a top 10 list for me, honestly. Uh, it could have been an, a pretty good top 10 Top five makes it just a little bit harder. It does, but you know what? We like hard things around here. That's a weird thing to say, um, but we're going to jump but... right into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's twice. <laughs> These semi double jokes. Oh. I'm ready with my post-it notes, sir. I'm like Disney over here. I've got adult jokes mixed into all these things. They're hidden. Do you want to go first? Do you have an honorable mention is what I should ask, I guess. I have two honorable mentions. How many do you have? I have two. Great. So. Go ahead. Yes, I'll go first. Sure. All right. So my two honorable mentions are Cloverfield. Solid, solid movie. I liked it. And The Others. Don't know if you ever watched that one. I have. I don't remember it. I would like to watch it again, um, but I do remember there was like a twist. Yes. And that's what I I haven't watched it in a long time either. And I really would like to rewatch it as well. But that, that twist never left my brain. And it I remember it having a lot of jump scares. Granted, this movie was it's old now. It's from 2001. So I was pretty young when I watched this. So clearly I was much more scared of everything. But I remember having watching it in the theater and it was a great time. So it. I think it's a really solid PG-13. And I mean, Cloverfield, I really enjoyed rewatching it. And it's found footage. Mm, naturally. Duh. Naturally. Hello. <laughs> I enjoyed Cloverfield one. a lot. I remember seeing it in theaters uh, and was very Me excited too. for it and um, liked it a lot. Although, I would like to watch it again now to see how it holds up uh, over time. Because my guess is it probably doesn't. I rewatched it last year and I hadn't watched it since it came out because I also watched it in theater mm -hmm. and I actually didn't like it when it came out. Okay. I didn't understand the hype. It, it did that thing, right? Where it was so popular that when I watched it, I was kind of confused as to why it was popular. But when I rewatched it last year, I absolutely, well, clearly it made honorable mention. So you loved I. It. It aged well, I thought, because they also don't show a lot of the 
alien monster thing. Yes. So it aged well in that in the effects situation because you don't see it too much. That's probably a good thing. Yes. It's probably a good I think thing. so. Smart that was move. another movie that had really good marketing, if I remember correctly, because everybody so. was except plus I feel like it was kind of also the first movie of its type. I think this is at the beginning of that whole found footage hype, I believe, because Blair Witch is older. Mm. But I don't feel like it catapulted found footage as much as maybe this and definitely paranormal activity. Yes. That really did it. It did. For found footage. <laughs> and did. I'm here for it. I know. You love Every your day. found footage. I not so much, but I do enjoy um, <laughs> Cloverfield. So my honorable mentions are in the reason that I am um, giving them an honorable mention. Here's not necessarily not necessarily that hang on, I got things just popping up everywhere over here. Well, disgusting. Uh, I know it. No, I, I don't even have that open. This is not in the news. Um, <laughs> because I think I get annoyed sometimes because like you on the last episode, sometimes I feel like, man, if they had just made that movie rated R, it would have been so much better. Yes. But then I look at some of the movies on my, particularly two movies on my list. I'm like, man, if it weren't for those movies, like my young horror fan in me may not mm -hmm. have been the fan that he was because that movie would not have been as easily accessible to me or me and my group of friends couldn't go to the movies and see it because we wouldn't have been able to get in. Um, True. That kind of thing. So that being said, my two honorable mentions are new movies. Uh, the first one being Megan and mm, the second yep. one being The Boogeyman from last year because I think those were two right. really good horror movies that I think we had both even said man if this had just been rated R we could have seen a little more they could have been a little uh, more risky with what they did but at the same time I feel like you have to have these movies because they catapult people into the horror genre and they bring in younger viewers who inevitably Erica end up in their mid 30s <laughs> like us and like have us. horror podcasts and then they sit around and critique PG-13 movies. When in fact, if it had not been for those new, exciting PG-13 movies, maybe they never would have become the horror fans that they are today. You're right about all of that. I didn't even think about that. Because did you ever sneak into, or what my friends and I did once, ask someone to pay for your rated R movie ticket and escort you in? We literally went up to a couple. It was three of us. We were 16, I think. I think it was to watch Texas Chainsaw. Nice. Maybe. That would make sense. And 2003. So that would have been. Yeah. Yeah. So it must have been that. And that was rated R. And I'll never forget. I had a huge line and we're like scoping some people out, judging, seeing who's going to be nice. And we literally went up to this couple and we're like, hey, can we be your kids? For five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Is that how you pitched it to them? We really did. We're like, hey, <sighs> we really want to watch this movie. We're obviously minors. Can you not only buy us a ticket, but can oh, we go dude. in with you as your kids? Just, thinking, just thinking about that in <laughs> relevance to it being 2024, and mm -hmm. like everything that's going on right now and all the things that I can't even concentrate. I'm laughing. Um, all the things that have come to light about that kind, just me and Abby at the movie theater and these two young girls coming up to us and saying, Hey, can we be your kids? I'm like, I'd be like looking around for cameras. Like, am I like, are the police about to bust in here and be like, these people are trafficking these like what just the fact. And then they probably bought the tickets for you. Yeah. They were super fine with it. They literally, we all walked in together and they literally said to the ticket person, what, what are they, you know, the box office people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they're with us. They're our family. I forgot how they worded it. I mean, this was so long ago. And then once we got into the theater, bye. We sat, you know, in our own group and they were, they had their little date night Aww. situation. But that is interesting because I, nowadays you probably can't do that because you would be, I would be like, why are you asking me this? Yeah, like, what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to get me, like, what is, like, what's, what, where's the camera? Like, are right. you about to broadcast this and say that I was, like, trying to buy tickets for these little kids? You know what I mean? Like, I could see how yeah. that would go very badly today. 
And that's sad because honestly, it's fun to have experienced that because it's part of being a kid, right? You can't go watch this movie because back then they actually cared mm. about who went in. I'm sure right. nowadays people might not care and it's all e-tickets at this point. Yeah. It's so different, but just having that experience and having that story to me is fun, especially because it's the movies, right? I love the movies and just add that little adventure felt so, oh my God, we did it. We Shoot. got in. Dude, funny story. I got a lot of them, as you know. The first time my sister ever met Abby is I was at my apartment and my sister's calling me. At the time, she and I didn't really have a good relationship um, mm -hmm. for a plethora of reasons, mostly my ex-girlfriend, but nonetheless. Um, she calls me and I'm like, that's weird. So I obviously I answer, right? So it's like, she doesn't ever call. Like, we don't even talk to each other. So what she wants, she's like, hey, are you at your apartment? And I'm like, yes. She was like, me and my friend are at the movie. There's a movie theater there. At the time, it was like the big movie theater. Um, mm. And they won't sell us a ticket to get into this movie Can because I was over 18, right? She said, can you come yeah. and buy the ticket and then like walk in with us? She was like, I'll buy your ticket so you can come if you don't want to stay and watch the movie. So I went over. I got their tickets. I think Abby and I like walked them into the theater and then we left. Because mm -hmm. I don't even remember what That's the movie amazing. was. But like, yeah, like that like... Now they anybody can just buy their ticket online. I think like yeah. like I think I could buy Lucy and Charlie tickets online because I'm 18 and I have the account, and they could just go there and print them off because you don't have to hand them to anybody anymore. You walk in, you nope. scan your barcode, you get your tickets, and you go to the theater. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I know when they scan it at the you know at the ticket guy, the ticket box dude, he doesn't even look. He literally scans it, looks at whatever theater number it is and points and says mm. that way. Down the hall to the left. That everything you own in a box to the left. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Beyonce, you got this today. We got Beyonce and Taylor in one episode. Boom. <laughs> and I can't stand one of them and I'll let you guys guess which one it is that I can't stand. Um so now we have went in, printed our tickets because there's nobody there to get your tickets from, right? So I scanned the barcode and half the time the barcode didn't work. So I got to punch in the 97 digit number. So I punch Eesh. it in, the tickets print out, nobody's there. We walk up to the concession stand to get our popcorn and drinks. And I asked them, I'm like, do you need to scan this? And she was like, oh yeah, we're supposed to scan. Like, so they have those people scanning tickets. Yeah, it's, then that's the thing. They're usually... It's they employ very young teenagers like I don't blame that. Who cares? You want to go watch this movie? Mm. Go for it. But back then it felt like it was more there was more surveillance on the ticket and they probably would have not cared either. We just didn't know and we didn't want to risk it because we really wanted to watch this movie. We were already dropped off. Like, what else were we going to do? We were going to choose the rom-com. That's true. So, That's true. You know? We got to go watch this horror movie, and it was great. Hmm. It's a good time. There you go. So that is why we need PG-13 movies, kids. Anyway, yes. are you ready to jump into your top five? <clears throat> Let's do it. I stretched. I saw. I'm ready. Did you do some My yoga number. Yoga beforehand? Do some downward dog? Yes. There we go. Okay, anyway. My number five is Lights Out. Don't know if you ever watched this one. I have. Uh, really like this one, and it's a surprising movie in the amount of scares that it has for me. And this started as a YouTube short that was quite frightening at the time. Mm -hmm. And then they made it into a full length movie. And uh, I thought they for from it coming from a short that really had no well, it didn't have a story. And then they created a whole fleshed out situation with what the person was or the entity was. I thought it was really well done and the whole thing with turning off the light, turning it on, that's always been scary anyway. Like a little dark spot in your house, who's hiding in that dark spot? Yeah, that's not fun. So uh, I thought it was a really solid PG-13 and this was another, all these movies were fun in the theater. Everything I mentioned in this list, I've watched in the theater and they were definitely a fun PG-13 experience. So we'll start it off with Lights Out at number five. Wow, you did a great job. That was perfect. Perfect. I remember seeing that movie. I don't remember. I saw it well after it had come out. Mm. So I did not see it in theaters. And actually, now that you say that, I have only seen maybe one of my top five in theaters. Ooh. 
Yeah, these were all either uh, rentals or uh, streamers. So, mm, can't wait to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. see which one it is that you watched at the theater. I'm curious. Hmm. I'll let you guess. Number five for me, and I couldn't not put it on the list. I don't even know that it should be in the top five as like my one of my five favorite movies. I just couldn't not include it on the list because without this movie. We wouldn't have HMC Studios. We wouldn't have the Horror Movie Crew podcast. And in turn, we probably wouldn't have Crooked Tripod. So I had to put at number five, The Final Girls. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie or not. Mm -mm. It is fantastic. It's got uh, Maylene Ackerman is in it. Um, Thaisa Farmiga is in it. It is a slasher movie, but it's a horror comedy. And we had spawned the idea for this podcast because we had watched that movie um, Mm -hmm. and then Friday the 13th and then another movie. I forget what it's called, but we loved this movie and we were just dying, cracking up. Jess, Seth and I uh, were all watching it together. It was during, I think it was during the pandemic because like we hadn't seen each other. So we got together, watched the movie and then it was like, man, we were just like talking about, I was like, we should have a, like a podcast to talk about like mm. everything we just talked about, about this movie, we could have recorded and other people could have probably been laughing at us talking about this movie because we had so much fun with it. So it is a really good movie. I know that I think Brooke from Elm street watched it and was like, I don't know how you guys thought this movie was as good as you guys thought it was. Um, mm-hmm. But we all three love it. And I think we, for a while, it was one of our highest rated movies. So, uh, yeah, number five is The Final Girls. Let me add that to my to my watch list. Is it a newer movie? Um, No, 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 no. This came out okay. in... 2015? Does that sound right? Are you looking it up now? Yeah, yeah. I found it on yes. Letterboxd. Yep, yep, yep. That yes, would, that would there it is. Okay. <gasps> Wait a minute. And it... <gasps> It's from it has to do with the 80s oh yeah 100 percent. oh my god read the premise just, just read the premise out loud for it <clears throat> a young woman grieving the loss of her mother a famous scream queen from the 1980s finds herself pulled into the world of her mom's most famous movie reunited the women must fight off the film's maniac killer this is almost like totally killer Kind of, kind of, dude. It's in the okay. same vein as Totally Killer, 100%. Yeah, it's a mom, mother, daughter, yep. 80s. Okay. It's good. I'm in. It's good. I'm did, in. Did you watch Silicon Valley? The show? Yes. I did not. Ah, bummer. So the main actor from that is also in it. He's the guy from like either the Sprint or the Verizon commercials now. Um, but uh, he is fantastic see. in it as well. Is it Adam Devine? Devine? No, no, he is hilarious in it as well, but not him. He's okay. from Parks or not Parks and Rec. Um, Workaholics. Adam Adam Devine is. But nonetheless, if you oh, have okay. not seen that movie, you should watch it. It's really good. Perfect. You know what? I will challenge you and your co-host of the Horror Cafe podcast to do an episode on that movie because I think you guys would both enjoy it very much. Ooh, we like challenges. It's on. Oh, I love that because I had her watch Totally Totally Killer with me because I'm like, well, mom, it's a mother daughter thing. <laughs> yep. I think you guys would really dig this movie. Awesome. I'll definitely let her know. I'll take it as a request, actually, because in March, we're actually I always say filming. I don't know why I always say filming instead of recording. Mm. Anyway, well, do you uh, do video? You guys don't do video. No, that's why I'm like, why do I always say filming? I don't know. It's a. It's weird. So we're we're recording March already, and what we're doing for March are listener requests. So okay. there you go. I'm Done gonna deal. I'm gonna sprinkle that in. Who? What Thank other you. listeners have? I can't believe I didn't get asked to make a request. I'm a little offended. Anyone can request at any time. I wasn't aware of this. I did was never made <laughs> known that I had the opportunity to make a request. You have the opportunity to make a request. I already did. And I didn't even you know just it. It's ridiculous. I'm Boom. upset. Let's move on. I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I feel nah, wo- you'll be I, fine. I feel wounded. I feel like disrespected. I feel like I'm not appreciated. There's a lot going on emotionally with me right now. That's a lot. The <laughs> alpha male in me has been crushed. Oh yeah, sure. Crushed. <laughs> We're back. We circled back to the alpha male. You know what's funny? I did a cold plunge on Sunday. I hate that I keep talking about this. I feel like a real douche when I talk about it, but I did one on Sunday. And that episode, I dropped it Saturday for a Patreon. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I, I was like, I try to find something that's going to take my mind off of the 30 degree water that I'm sitting in. Um, uh-huh. So I turned <laughs> that on. such a thing? And the beginning yeah. of it was uh, that whole alpha male. Thing, I was like in there laughing while I was doing it. So it took my mind off of uh, off yes. of the cold plunge. And my uh, my eyes are Excellent. still uh, hurting from when I was laughing about the trafficking at the movie thing. Anyway, continue on. <laughs> the teenage trafficking. My number four is Insidious. Because I know uh, you're not a fan, but for me, this is one of those haunted house movies that I absolutely love. I like I like Patrick Wilson. I like the story of this with the kid and Patrick Wilson. And there's a lot of things in this movie. I know that famous jump scare is one of the biggest things in this movie, but it's actually when they're in. It's called the further, right? The you, further. you think I would know this, but you got it. Nailed you know. it. When they go into their their own house in the further with all those uh, ghosts, whatever they are, and the way they just stand there and they look like mannequins and then they kind of move fast. One of the scariest things I've seen, the old lady dressed in black, can't stand her, freaks me out every time. It's just one of those classic haunted house movies that is just amazing to me. And um, I could rewatch this at any time and really enjoy this movie. And um, I'm if they keep making more, I would keep watching these. I mean, they very well may. I you said Insidious, and I was like, okay, is she gonna go chapter two, chapter three? Like, no, part one. (laughs) Just part one. You had me confused. Um, Sorry. No, don't be sorry. You did a great job of building the anticipation. Anytime. Yeah, I. You're correct. I am not a huge fan of the first Insidious. I think they get progressively better as they go on. Um, I don't know why. I can't remember. I think we did a whole episode on it, but I don't remember exactly why I disliked that one. It's definitely not one I revisit. So, I cannot remember why that's but, okay is it patrick wilson does he bother you i don't like patrick wilson at all um right for that can- the most stupid of reasons but i don't like him um anyway <laughs> it's fine it's okay it's but okay. that that doesn't help when you don't like an actor i feel like that can definitely affect how you feel about a movie or a role <sighs> mostly a movie yeah, mostly a movie and a, a series too. But I I don't know why. Mm-hmm. But I I don't mind him in uh, the Conjuring. So I don't know. It's just I don't know what it is about it. But yeah, I don't know. This the that's just for me. It's not uh, in my other two co-hosts on Horror Movie Crew podcast. They love those movies. So like I said, I think they get progressively better. But nonetheless, it's your pick. You can pick whatever you want. Number four for me, the Skeleton Key. You know what? This is why we needed a top ten. Because I had completely forgotten about that movie. And it is so good. It has Dude, a good twist. The twist is good. The whole movie is good. Yes, I, I like movie. that, like, Bayou, Louisiana. I love it when they center yes. movies around that. I don't know why. Like, uh, the Hatchet series is is, is in that area in uh, New Orleans, in Louisiana. I just, like, this is complete. It's, it's such a weird culture. Like, it just shows, like, because our, our country is so big geographically that we just have all these like pockets of different cultures within our country that like you like, yeah, we're all from this. We're all Americans from the same country, but like there's just these pockets of these places and that's one of them that is just so different. And like the lore down there is so intriguing and interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And that movie engulfs all of it. Like all of it. Yes. Yes. All the way up to the end of it. When you're like, oh shit, this is what's going on. Yes. It's so good. Yes. It was hard to not pick it in the honorable mention, but I would love to do an episode on that movie because it is so good. I've watched it a few times and it's amazing. I'm sure that's aged well. It's been a long time, but. We did an episode on it. I forget. I think I picked it, but I don't remember why. Uh, It was whatever. We used to theme our months, and anymore, we don't even theme Mm -hmm. them anymore. We just let the host pick whatever they want. Um, But I forget why we did that movie, but I'm pretty sure I'm almost positive I picked it, and we all rated it pretty high, but it did. Back to long-ass story. Short, I cannot concentrate today. It did (laughs) age very well. Okay, good. I can imagine, because if I remember correctly, it's very, it's psychological and just, things going there's nothing cgi or anything going on like that but oh my god i gotta rewatch that one now and the acting in it is so good 
Yes. Kate Hudson yes. is Kate phenomenal. Hudson. She is. That was for me one of the first roles I saw I had seen her in when she was just hitting Hollywood. Mm. I was like, "Ooh, okay. Okay." And she did a horror movie, so I'm in. There it is. Horror yeah. thriller, so, whatever. Th- for me it's a skeleton key. I th- I would be happy to do that episode with you if you would if you would have me. If you would have Oh my me. god, yes. I would. Perfect. I perfect. would love it. Such a good movie. Okay, great. See, we both got two episodes out of this now. <laughs> there you go. Boom. Done deal. <laughs> All right. My number three. You will be happy with this pick. It is The Visit. <laughs> uh. Listen. First of all, it is found footage. Found footage had to be on the actual list. Naturally. Naturally. And this movie is hilarious. I love that kid. But it is also still really scary. And the twist in this one is amazing. Because I didn't see that coming. And honestly, I think it's one of M. Night's best uh works personally because it just uh, the characters were so even the even i didn't even like the sister that much but that's what made it endearing like to see the brother and the sister the grandparents it was just crazy the the crawling under the house the poop the diaper in the <laughs> face oh my god and the kid at the end oh it was just it's amazing uh, i love this movie it's great scary fun watch this in theater I've watched it several times at home and it's just a good time. It's I probably it. one of my favorite, if not my favorite M night movie. It's, it's right up my alley. It is hilarious. Uh, yeah. Seth hated that movie when we did I it. Know, I know. Hated it. I'm so sad. He hates kids. So, I mean like he just like the kids were annoying him. He didn't like it. He's old. <laughs> he's grumpy. He related more with the old people in it than he did with the children in it. They were being, <laughs> They're being tortured by these old elderly people. But I agree with you. The twist in that movie was really good. Um, It was. And and it makes total sense whenever you figure out what's going on. Or when basically, because I didn't even figure it out. I had, they told me what was going on in the movie, right? Like that. I didn't figure it out until they revealed it. So like when they do that reveal, you're like, oh, this makes perfect sense. And it's rewatchable. So mm. it's not something, it's not a twist that makes you go, all right, I'm not going to, I'm not really interested in watching this again because I've already been, I've, it's been revealed, but it actually makes it more fun to watch it again. Cause you pick up on, okay, uh, that's not normal. And then just even like realizing the mom didn't really check up on them mm. to see them visually. Like that's weird. It's so good on multiple watches. Cause you do pick, pick up on multiple things and it's still a fun ride. It's re- very rewatchable. It, it like makes you question the mom at one point for me Oof. at least. Cause I'm like, why is she not like these people are weird. Like why would she yeah. allow them one, allow them to go there and two, like she had to have known how weird they were, but then you find out it's not even her parents. Right. So it's like, okay, well the people that, that she was actually sending them to were probably people that she felt comfortable with them staying with. They weren't these weirdos that we have been dealing with for the last hour and a half. So it was like, nonetheless, I probably wouldn't have done that, but still like it made it a little more. Okay. I guess. Yeah. So number three, the visit. Good choice. Good choice. I wonder if we're going to have any of the same movies on our list. I'm wondering the same. I'm, I'm assuming one of them will match. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I guess we'll find out. Number three for me, and you probably could have guessed this was going to be on my list, but uh, is Kong Skull Island. Now, some people may say this isn't a horror movie, but I'm sorry. Kong is part of the original, the original universal monsters. When you have these big Goliaths fighting, I don't think they're really part of the universal monsters, but nonetheless, they are part of the monster (laughs) lore. And I don't care if you think it's it's horror or not. I personally do. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. I watch it at least once a year. The rewatchability of this movie is fantastic. Um, And I'm excited for the new one that comes out here in a few weeks. Uh, I think it's a few weeks now, right? It comes out March 29th, so in about a month. Mm -hmm. You saw the poster? There's a new trailer out. Have you watched the new trailer yet? I have not. Oh, I didn't know. Dude. I, th- I just saw the 
Mark posted that a new poster came out. Mm. The new trailer is fantastic. <laughs> You're going to the theater, fantastic. I hope. Me and Lucy are going. Yes, Lucy wants to go <gasps> see it. She <gasps> watched uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, and now she wants to see the new one. So we will be seeing it in theaters. I'm very excited for it. And this is the one for me that sparked it all because I had went to see the new Godzilla movies and I'm just not into Godzilla. It's not my thing. And yep. then this came out and I was like, okay, I'm back. I'm back. Back. Re yes. Let in. I am, I'm team Kong all the way. Lucy is team Godzilla. We're going to have a lot of problems Ooh. at the theater. Um, oh, that's going to be a fun. I wish I was sitting behind you guys. She's team lizard. I am team monkey. Excellent. Are you guys that you should wear a Kong shirt and she should wear a Godzilla shirt? You know what? I might have to make that happen. And I think I just missed the T Public deal too, where I could have ordered them on T Public probably. But oh, I'm sure there's going to be another deal in like a week. I don't know. You never know with them, right? Well, I need to, I need to order it though. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely I am definitely Team Kong, and she is 100 percent Team Godzilla. So we'll see. That'll be a fun time. Yes. Father daughter. I'm date. excited. I'm excited. Last one we went to was Wonka. So, you know, now it's my turn to pick one. Yes. And then, you know, you switch it. That's true. Enough. Even though she technically asked me if, if she could come. So. Aw, love it. Yeah, you got to give us a whole report card after that. Of course I will. Naturally, I will have to because I love these movies. Absolutely. So you're number three. Kong, Skull, Skull Island. Island. You got it. Have you seen <laughs> that movie? Yeah, I did. I actually did. I actually like that one. That's with Tom Hindle, Hindleson. Heidelstein. Him. Loki. <laughs> Loki. Just call him Loki. I may have messed Loki. his name up. I really was confident when I said it, though. So You you were. Heidelstein. I was not. Yeah. Tom Heidelstein. So, we're going to go with it. That Loki. We and I think Brie that. Larson is in that movie, you know? So you got Captain Marvel and Loki. Is. That's true. Marvel before Marvel. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Heavy hitters. Top two. Yes, this is it. This is it. My number two is The Ring. Ooh, solid choice. Now, this movie, this, so if it wasn't for my number one, the, the, my number one is the one I found out was PG-13. I actually thought it was R, and then I was like, oh my God. Oh my. So The Ring, I believe, is one of those best PG-13 movies. It did not need to be R. This is... I think it's aged really well even now. I watched it two years ago again, and it's still amazing. I love the storytelling of this movie. I watched this. I remember when this came out. It was a big deal. I knew nothing about it, though. Everybody just kept saying the ring. And I'm like, what is this ring? What is this what ring about? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't even know what this is. What is it? Is it an actual ring? Like, on my finger? Like, what? It could be. So, so at the time, I think I was in... I think this was middle, late middle school or early high school. I go to the movies with my boyfriend, little boyfriend at the time. Your little we're boyfriend? Like, all right, little boyfriend, you know, your little high school boyfriend thing. Sure. And we're like, all right. He was like, all right, let's go watch this, The Ring. Everyone's talking about him. Okay, I don't, again, I don't know what this is. Pack theater. I think it was the second weekend it was out already and it was packed. We sat right at the front. Like, so that you're literally facing up, up. at the screen yes. front. And this is before lounge seats, kids. And before assigned seating, kids. <laughs> oh, so you got there late is what I'm hearing. Your little boyfriend brought you to the movies late is what happened. He, he did. I hope you it's dumped him up. after that. It was, in short, it was shortly after. So. Yeah, I would hope so. That was a terrible move. Young kids listening to this. Don't. You can do your assigned seats now, you spoiled brats. But we That's used to have true. to go and get there on time. And if you got stuck yeah. in the front row, you were leaving with two-day neck cramps. Oh, for real. Thank God we were young. Because now, forget it. It'd be stiff for like a week, probably. <laughs> That's it's a terrible. long time to be stiff. You never know. But I, now it's... <laughs> When you get the loungers, though, I don't think it would happen now. You get the loungers. That's true. It looks straight up. It'd be perfectly fine. They've made it better. So these kids don't know what they're missing. They don't know. Sitting at the front like that. They don't know. Anyway, so we're sitting, we're watching this movie. I'm like, wow, this is really intriguing. Oh, my God. When this TV thing happened, I mean, number one, it was five times larger, right? Mm. Because I'm at the front. Yes. The whole theater, including myself and the boyfriend, we were yelling. Like, we couldn't <laughs> believe what we were seeing it wasn't something you we had seen it was 
incomprehensible of what was going on. Mm -hmm. I just remember, bro, oh my God, why? <laughs> you know, just, it was the best like interaction of a theater and true shock and mm -hmm. horror of what was going on. So just that memory alone makes the ring very special to me and probably a lot of horror fans if you experienced it then and it was something fresh like that. But it's still scary. Just that scene has not aged bad, in my opinion, even in 2024. They did a spectacular job with those effects. They did. So number two is the ring. That's a great pick. Do you think your little boyfriend listens to this? No. No? No. I don't know. How maybe, many years ago now? I don't know. Maybe he does. You know, what would you say to him right now? If he, What if he was listening right now? What would you say to him about showing up late and getting bad seats for the ring? I hope you don't show up to movies late anymore. Although now it doesn't really matter. Now you can show up right on time and not to worry about it. And they'll deliver your popcorn to your seat. These kids, I tell you what, these kids. It's true. It's true. <sighs> oh, mm, so easy. Yeah, so Nowadays. easy. Your number two, the ring. The ring. Interesting. Very interesting. Seven days. Seven days. My mm. number two. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Are you sitting down? I am. It is. On. You are holding on for dear life. Holding My number two is the ring. What? what? Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, like, wait. <laughs> nope. The ring two. I think this is no okay. surprise to anyone. I literally have Samara tattooed on my arm. She's right here. I show you her like three times a week. There she is. She's yeah. on my arm. One of my, if not my favorite horror characters is Samara from The Ring. I think Naomi Watts in that role is fantastic. Uh, the mm -hmm. second one, I love the fact that Samara has taken over Aiden's body and all she wants is for um, for Naomi Watts' character, Rachel, to be her mother. I know there's people that don't like that, but that bathtub scene with the water's upside down and then it, it's all on the ceiling and it falls down. Like the whole storyline in the second one, I really enjoy. I understand the CGI deer scene that gets a little weird. It didn't age very well. I just did an episode on this not too long ago with somebody. I'm pretty sure. And I loved it. I even liked the third one, which is rings. I almost had it on here and I was like, I can't have three of the five. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the ring franchise, and that'll be like once. Then I'm like, that's cheating, and it's not giving mm. due diligence to the ring in the ring too. But again, I love the ring too. I think it's on par. It's not as good as the first one because I think the first one set so many standards moving forward. But yeah. it is one that I could rewatch and rewatch. Um, and I'm a little biased. I know this, but I love what they do with those movies because they don't just bring back the Samara character. Um, and okay, she has these powers and she comes through the TV and you watch this tape and it, it kills you in seven days. Like they could have just made another movie and that had been it, but they continue mm -hmm. to add to the lore and they continue to add to the storyline. Cause even in the third one, you find out more about the backstory and about the storyline. And they do that in the second one as well. Cause you think at the end of the first one, oh, okay, they made this tape. They showed it to somebody. This whole thing is over. Uh, and yeah. then obviously even the twist and I'm already going into the first one, which I will wait to do that. But I like that they add to the story and they have just continued to build out this huge storyline. And it wasn't just resting on the laurels of the first one that it was scary and they could have very easily went for the cash grab and just made another one based off of those same scenarios. They continue to develop the storyline. And again, I think Naomi Watts is equally as good in the second one. So anyway, long ass story short, my number two <laughs> is the ring two. I have to rewatch it. I, watched it once i actually remember not liking it mm. as much but i'm a different horror fan now i really am that's true so that's true i mean you, re to you really it. gotta go into it um with i don't want to i don't want to say you have to but you should in my opinion the best way to view that is that you are getting all these new nuggets and all this information and just that it's mm. one continuous storyline. Cause I think it only takes place like six months after the first one. I think I do remember that it wasn't that short. Like it wasn't that long after mm -hmm. the first one. So uh, yes, I do. I enjoy, I enjoy, I love that franchise. Like I said, it's, it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite horror franchise. So 
you got me though. I was like, the ring? What do you mean? You were worried. I was I was worried and disappointed. I'm like, no. Disappointed? No. Why would you have been disappointed? Because I know that's number one. <laughs> I knew it from the minute we created this mm. idea. I was like, come yes. on now. You do know I love the ring. What if I was yeah. like the grudge? I called bullshit on. Okay. All right, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. All right. Number one for me is the woman in black did not know this was PG 13. And the minute I saw it on the list, I was like, this is absolutely number one. Otherwise it would have been the ring for yeah. sure. But as I've mentioned this countless, countless of times, but just in case I love this movie, this is probably after the shining, one of my second favorite horror movies, because while yes, Insidious is one of those great haunted house horror movies, this to me is perfect. Mm. Well, one, it has Daniel Radcliffe, so that's already a huge win. Naturally. Naturally. And it's just, it's it's lonely, it's sad, he's vulnerable in it, it's isolated, this huge mansion, it's scary, this bitch is scary as hell. She's just like the insidious lady, all dressed in black, the black <laughs> veil, oh my god, that stuff is scary to me. Yeah. A apparently, the a black veil is, because you can't really see the face. That's true. It's very haunting. And it just, it's old school haunted house, like creaks, some stuff moving in the background, dark, light, ambiance. Like, it's just, it's so good. I will always talk about how much I love this movie. I think I've said it 20,000 times on this show already. So I don't want to beat it too much. It sounds wrong, but you know what I mean? I don't judge. So, beat it as much as you want. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and the story is so sad and it has the horror movie ending that I like. Which spoiler, it's it's not a good ending, but in the right way for me, he did a great job in coming from Harry Potter to do something completely different. This was right after Harry Potter. So it was just like, oh, my God, he can he's not just Harry. He is Daniel Radcliffe now and he is his own thing. The Woman in Black, I own it. I've watched this several times. This is, if it's a rainy day, this is a great movie. Halloween, it's gloomy outside, snow. Now that I know what snow looks like. Now you do, you're in the know. I do, I'm in the know. The Woman in Black, I love it. This is in my heart forever. I love it. Oh, and it is a book, if anyone's interested. And there's other renditions of this movie, but I am specifically talking about their Daniel Radcliffe one. Have you, read, other... have you read the book? I did read the book a very long time ago. It was after I watched the movie and the book is very short and it is good. And it's somewhat, the movie somewhat follows the book, if I remember, but not a hundred percent. Gotcha. Per usual, but. I don't yes. remember this movie. To be honest with you, I, I know that I've seen it. Mm. Um, when did it come out? Do you remember? It was quite a Ooh. while ago, wasn't it? This was a while ago. I would bet 2011 or 2012. I would Maybe probably agree with that. The only thing I remember is him like in a carriage or something. Is he in like a carriage yes. surrounded by water? Yes. Yep. Because there, the mansion is out in this marsh that kind of like a tide in the ocean. It The tide comes in and out and it reveals the path to the mansion and it'll flood and strand the person at the mansion if you don't leave on time. Mm. So then that was one of the things like getting stranded there and finding the secrets in the marsh. What a dumb place to build a house when you think about it. Uh, I would, yes, I believe so. Uh, let me see. I'm actually looking this up. The woman. I do remember watching it. I don't remember liking it, if I'm being honest, but I haven't seen it since it came out. And I think I we may have rented it from the Red Box at the time. 2012. I was right. And that's right at the time of Red Box and its height, if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can see you not liking this, mm. to be honest. So I wouldn't be surprised, but that's okay. That's okay. Everybody's different. Okay. Josh. I'm here for the ghost section of that's horror. True. That's true. <laughs> like I said, our our list uh, vary drastically. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that doesn't surprise me, though. I thought the ring would be on both of ours, which maybe it's not even on mine. My number one could be the grudge. I guess we're getting ready to find out now. Do it. 
My number one is no shocker to anybody. It is the ring. It's my not my favorite horror movie, but it is up there with tied for my favorite horror movies. It's in the t- it's it's one of the top five, yeah. if not the top three. Yeah, I, it might be in the top three. I don't really know. Well, Scream, Halloween. It might be right there in the top three. I I I think so. <laughs> I but, knew it was going to be up there. I have nostalgic ties to this movie. I remember when it first came out. Uh, my parents, I think, had it. it. We had it rented. I think my uncle had rented it and let my parents borrow it to watch it. He was like, you're not going to believe this movie. And then I watched it. And I had a birthday party at my house. And like I had all these my friends over. And we all watched it at the house. Like it, All the lights were off. And there was just like not enough like my parents like living room is like decent size but we had, there was couches and chairs and like there was not enough room for everybody so there were people laying on the floor it's oh, a, wow. one of those parties right like and we just watched this movie i just remember everybody screaming and getting into it it was a blast um mm-hmm. so again, i have nostalgia ties to it but not only that it's a freaking great movie like they did so much with so little because it Legit. did age really well again naomi watts is fantastic in it it's very much a whodunit storyline, which I really, really like. Mm-hmm. She's like investigating this this entire time. Um, yep. And I don't know. I could sit here and talk about it all day. I think I've done two episodes on it and neither of them were for the Horror Movie Crew podcast. I don't think we've ever done this movie. Maybe we did. What? Maybe we did. I, that might be a lie because I don't know how I wouldn't have picked it. Yeah. I'm pretty I sure I remember talking with Seth about it. So we did do it. And then I did it for another podcast too. But I think I've done three episodes on it. Nonetheless, doesn't matter. Go Google it, kids. Um, <laughs> there's just so many memorable scenes. And like even like, yeah, the one you talked about is fantastic. Everybody remembers it. But even right out of the gate, when they show that girl's face in the closet, oh. and you're like, oh shit, this is what I'm in for. And the Absolutely. way that... I could, t- I could talk about this movie all freaking night, too, so you're going to have to cut me off at some point. But, like, the ambiance and the, the score for this movie are its own character within the movie. Because, like, that first scene where... And I love movies that open like this because it's very reminiscent of Scream where you jump into the, like, shit happening right out of the gate. Yeah. A lot of the time with B characters that you don't necessarily have to get intimate with, that you, like, they are related to somebody later that you do... Uh, you know, need to know more about. But like, I love how it just jumps right into it. But like, that first scene is so good, and like you hear the the storm outside, and then the water's running, and like it's just all of it is done so well. And they show what her face looks like, and you're like, holy cow, dude! Like this, we're gonna be in for a ride. And how loud that scene was! It was yes. so fast. You don't have time. It's it's I remember when we finally were able to rent it. We paused it to see what this face was, because in the theater, you you're just like, what? It's so yeah. loud. You you scream and you probably close your eyes. Right. But it sets you up. You're, 100%. It's like, oh, shit. This is what like you said, this is what we're in for it's, in this movie. And the way they take the cut scenes from the tape when you watch it and then all of those things, she figures out what they are, what they mean, what part of her story they came from. That is all done so well. That burning tree, the freaking well itself, the the barn with the ladder. Yep. That scene where you see how high in the air they're keeping this girl because Naomi Watts is like this big and this huge ladder and then she gets up there and that's where they're keeping this girl. So I don't know, the whole, when she pe- peels the wallpaper back and that tree is there, Mm-hmm. I have an obsession with trees. I have two of them tattooed on my arm. I'm getting ready to get another one tattooed on my arm. So like, I like trees. I don't know. Maybe if the tree wasn't in the movie, Eric, I wouldn't like it, but they do have a really cool tree and I like it. So nonetheless, long story short, fantastic movie. Uh, it was one of the, my favorite horror movies growing up. Like it was one that I got introduced to very early into my horror fandom. And it's just, mm-hmm. again, I have that nostalgic n- nostalgia tie to it. My number one is The Ring. The Ring. So good, dude. I I didn't want to rant too much because I'm like, I know this is number one. Mm. Take it away. (laughs) (laughs) So you knew that was my number one. I mean, if I was wrong, I would have been really upset. But I'm like, Mm. I was like 99.9% sure it was going to be your number one. Mm. I was pretty confident. I would have gone 100%, but you know, there's always room for... 
That is true. There's always room for a, a little error. So uh, out of my yeah. list, the final girls, Skeleton Key, Kong Skull Island, The Ring 2, and The Ring. Other than The Ring, would you have picked any of those other ones? Did you think that they were going to be on my list? Did you think that these were going to be in my top five? I did not. Interesting. I actually didn't even think, because nobody talks about the skeleton key. So mm. that one to me is the biggest shocker on your list in a very good way. Because it was one of the movies that popped up when I looked up PG-13 movies. And I was like, oh, man. Okay. If this was a top 10, it would definitely be there. But I didn't choose it. And it's just awesome that you chose it. And we should definitely do an episode on this movie. Because I'm in. It's great stuff. Which one did you watch in theater? The Ring 2. Mm, okay. I That's, would have guessed Skull Island, actually. Uh, so. No, I did not. I showed up late to the party on that one because the freaking mm. Godzilla movies were so shitty. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this again. And I yeah. actually streamed it. Um, when I watched did it I on sh- Netflix. You actually. watched on I think I watched on HBO Max at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they bounce around, so. That's true, that's true. So yeah. I made a list. I didn't look these up. I made a list, and then I had to go back and make sure the ones I was going to pick were PG-13. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I had 13 on my list. Wow. Yeah, you could have done. I mean, I could have done a top 10 also, because there, uh, there actually are now, after talking all that, like there are a lot of good PG-13 horror movies. I Am Legend? Yep, that was one. And if I had a top 10, I would... De- that was one I watched in theater. Same thing. Sam, come here, girl. Oh, uh, so we're Samantha. It's like, oh, no, it's oh, a girl God. dog. Oh, God, the whole theater died yeah. when that happened. Like, oh, it's a girl. If it was a boy <laughs> dog, it'd be fine, but it's a girl dog. Apparently, yeah, but uh-huh. it was so cute. <laughs> All right, so I am legend that didn't make my list, but it, I mean it was on my list, but it didn't make the the top five. Happy Death Day, I love that movie. That's a fun one, the first one. Yeah, the second one gets weird. Super didn't like the, how, where that went at all. What else? Uh, how about our boy Andy Musietti with Mama? I did not like that one. Really? I remember not liking it. But to be fair, I am a different horror fan now. Mm, <laughs> that's my new it. thing. That should be my new excuse for everything. I'm that's a true. different horror fan now. That's true. It'd be interesting to uh, do like movies that we didn't mm. like initially and then that we came around on later. See, I don't know if we could do five of those, but like that'd be an interesting ranking to do as well. Movies we came around on later. That would be good to to like actually write down a list of movies that we don't like. See if on rewatch, and then we can do the episode later, like with time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because it, it would take a lot to. Uh, It'll take a lot. I don't think I have five off the bat. So I haven't even watched a horror movie this year. So that's true. I've only watched two now. I'm up to two. I need one to. is not new. It was just I watched one. I need to make it a goal, and maybe uh, this will be what pushes me over the edge. I need to make a goal to watch one horror movie every week. And I know I'm behind the eight ball, so I'd have to catch up, but that means I need to watch 52 horror movies this year, which sounds like a lot, but really one a week. Isn't that unattainable? It's not. Uh, I think it was earlier last year. I was watching, it wasn't a horror movie a day, but I was watching a movie every weekday. Oh, really? Yes. But then I stopped because then I, started playing video games mm. more and then reading. So it, it's, I would think I was actually thinking that today. I'm like, maybe I should do weekly. I'm going to do that's a little easier. Maybe we should do this together. Let's start an Erica and Josh crooked tripod challenge of 52 Ooh. horror movies by the end of the year. So one a week, I feel like that as an average one, I feel like that is an attainable goal. I'm in. Okay. We got to catch up though. <laughs> Yeah, because what we're we're not that far behind. I don't think we're in like week six or something of the year. So that's not. Are that we? Bad. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. Let's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. This is the seventh week. I have two. So <laughs> if salt burn counts, I have one. You if know he- what? I watched Scream Six right before we did. 
the stabbies. That counts because it could be any horror movie, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It yeah, doesn't d- matter. It doesn't have to be new. It can be any. So, okay, so I have two. You have two. So that means we have five to catch up with and then That's not continue. bad. Continue. That's not bad. And then at the end of the year, we can rank it. Oh. What did we like? There we go. That means we gotta that means we gotta keep this letter box up to date. That's true. So. Well, I'll remember to add it after I watch it, because I'm I'm a big fan of lists as well as um goals. So I like that, you know, if I'm oh I'm I'm nicking an, nicking another one off of my my list. I'm trying to think if I got anything else on here worth Okay, here's one. Are you ready? Ready. Disturbia. I remember liking that. With Shia LaBeouf, however you pronounce this guy's name. Shia LaBeouf, yeah. yeah. I feel like if I watched it now, I don't know if I would like it as much as I did then, but I remember being a kid mm-hmm. at the same age as the character he's playing, I liked that movie a lot. Yeah. I watched that in theater too. I used to go to the theater a lot back then, <laughs> apparently. I mean, oh, I, what God. else did we have to do, right? Like what? That's what teenager and it's PG-13, so. And you had to go to the theater because it wasn't like now where they drop all the stuff on streaming immediately. Um, yeah, true. Megan, The Ring, The Ring, Two Skelky, Mama, Final Girls, The Mime Legend. The, oh, I had The Visit on my list, but you'd already, you you did pick that. Woo-hoo. Last Woo-hoo. one I have is Drag Me to Hell, which is a Sam Raimi movie with Justin Long in it. I don't know if you've seen that or not. That's a good qualification for this that I did not like it when I saw it. Watched it in theater and everything. Everybody's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I didn't like it. Mm. But that was, I don't know how old that movie is. I'm curious to see how it is now. You should rewatch it. It's got one of those um, rememorable, rememorable, memorable. It's got, memorable. One, it's got one of those very memorable jump scares Ooh. in it. That is very much like the one from Insidious. Mm, um, and what's okay. the other one? There's another one that gets everybody. I forget it. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But there, it's it's very much boom, gotcha. Ooh. Okay. So, but yeah, nonetheless, I would, I would, I think I'm going to rewatch it. That'll be one of my 52 movies I'm going to rewatch because I love Hell Justin yeah. Long. You listen to Justin Long's podcast? I didn't know he had one. Yeah, it's called Life is Shorter. Ooh. It's pretty good. He had, um, the actor Mark Paul Gosler, I think his name is. He's the actor that plays Zach from Saved by the Bell. Okay. He's also in this show, Abby and I watched called Found, where he's a bad guy. But nonetheless, um, I not an important conversation to have right now. But Justin Long's <laughs> podcast is very good if you have not seen it. But would good you enough. like to uh, tell the crewies, reiterate your top five, uh, since I already did mine, and I feel like I have been talking for too long, so I'm going to shut up. <clears throat> Number five was Lights Out. Number four, Insidious. Number three, The Visit. Number two, The Ring. And finally, number one, The Woman in Black. Bum, bum, bum. You did a great the job. The crowd goes wild. I got I got a level with you. That was, that was pretty impressive, the way you just rattled that off. Thank you. Nailed Thank it. Thank you. I try. I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to buy time again while I pull up this Patreon list because I feel bad that I wasn't shouting out these patrons at the beginning of the year. I was getting lazy. I was mm-hmm. off my game. My rhythm was just not there, but I have fixed this, kids, and I am back with a vengeance. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap it up? You're back with a vengeance and a new goal of 52 horror movies. That's right. That's right. I will challenge the Krubies to partake in mm-hmm. this with us. Start a letterbox. I'm at Josh's mannequin, I think, on Letterboxd. What's your what's your handle? Do you know? Uh Ericats. So it's E R Y K A T Z. Because I love cats. Cats. And I like the letter Z. So there it is. And your name's Erica. So I mean all that there you go. makes sense. Josh's mannequin is mine. Because I was a big fan of Jack's mannequin. I was actually a big fan of something corporate before that. And then mm. No, not a, not a fan of something corporate. I, I don't even know what are these things. These are bands. Are these bands. These are oh. bands. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Didn't so know. Andrew McMahon was the singer of something corporate. Well, technically, he still mm-hmm. is because they tore a little bit, and then he he got uh, started his own project called Jack's Mannequin. He got cancer, mm-hmm. and his uh, album got shelved. He 
fought his way back from having cancer and then ended up uh, continuing to tour, and he is uh, still doing it today. His new band is called Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I do love uh, Jack's Mannequin, which is where the handle name Josh's Mannequin ah. came from. Anyway, thank you to all the patrons who give us your hard-earned money to listen to us talk about ridiculous things like uh, Andrew McMahon from Jack's Mannequin's uh, past and his story and uh, hearing us rank all these fun movies. You need to hear Erica go back and do some rewatches because she's going to just find those old movies she didn't like that she now loves. That's right. You never know. I could become obsessed with something new. That's true. And these folks are going to get to watch your reaction to your very first ever root beer float. <laughs> Oh my God, yes. the pressure is on. It's going to be a good it's time. On. Thank you to Russ H, Aaron P, Zach F, Brian Hathaway from the Don't Go Out There podcast, Kimberly D, Felicia Connor from Two Chicks and a Horror Flick, Caitlin Ashley V, Mark and Brooke from a podcast on Elm Street and a podcast on Fury Road, and my lovely mother, Nana Stevie Nix. Oh, wow. Ooh. That was a lot, dude. That was a lot to I felt it along. with you. Phew. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. In that case, we are out of here. Bye. 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 Bye.